Okay, are we recording? Yeah. Uh, right, so I was doing the diagram. Um, and I think I was saying this to you before, I like creating the diagram and then basically describe it in a ridiculous amount of detail. And I don't know, it make, that makes it easier for me. So this is the diagram. <clears throat> and what have we been given? We've been given... Uh, AD parallel to BE parallel to CF. Um, I haven't put this in. I'll put this in now. where AB equals BC. I got everything I need. So they're parallel and they're cutting equal intervals off the transversal. I think that's all I need. Um, and then what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that if they could equal intervals off the blue transversal, that they also could equal intervals off the green transversal. So I'm trying to prove that ZE equals EF. Yeah. So my construction then, so again, I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to um, describe it. Oh, I wonder, can I, sorry, I'm going to try something else. Get rid of that. Okay, so, I need to draw a transversal parallel to DE, yeah? And like I said, I'll describe it in more detail in a second. And then I also need copy, paste. I also need uh, that there. Very this one. I'm just gonna lengthen slightly. Yeah? Okay. So let's, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this. Um, ah, sorry, I want to take out my, uh, know if I can do it. I want to take that B out of there. Okay, so that's better. All right, okay. I'll see, can I put back in that little bit of green line? Not great. Anyway, fine. So, this here was A, this here was B, this here was C. We said that this and this were equal. Uh, that dot is obviously A. This one here is E dash. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized those lines don't cross properly, but it's fine. And that one there we will call F dash. And then this one is B dash and this one is A dash. Right, so describe what I've just done. So I have to draw the second green line, which is A F dash parallel to D, F, cutting 
eb at e dash. And then the other one is draw a dash f dash parallel to ac cutting eb at b dash. Yeah, so, oh, sorry, it hasn't finished, but I there's no way I could um, write that without having it drawn. So literally draw it, then write it. Um, I don't know, for me it makes it easier anyway. Yeah, so we are focusing on Sorry, the line is too thick. Uh, we're focusing on this triangle here and this triangle here. Okay, that little bow tie in the center is what we're focusing on. Yeah? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say that BC equals B dash F dash because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram. <clears throat> so BC, equals v dash f dash y because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram oh my god it's so slow There you go. So this is equal to this, but we obviously know that BC is equal to AB because we were given that at the very beginning. So I can say, but BC equals AB, which is what we were um, given at the very, very beginning. So you can see that this, come on, Jesus, this is what I've underlined, B dash F dash equals BC, and this equals BC, so then they must be equal to each other. So B dash F dash equals A B. Yeah, and now I've got a side, a side, it will go up there, in the two triangles that are equal. Yeah, so the other things you have to get are actually angles, you don't get any more sides. So the first one is... See that one there? Yeah. So this one is B A E dash. So B A E dash is equal to this one which is E dash, F dash, B dash. E dash, F dash, B dash. And the reason I know they're equal is because there's a Z there. They are alternate, yeah? I'll put the Z in and then I'll just take it out because it'll get too messy, but there's the Z, yeah? All right, so that is an angle. Now, I can't get any angle. It has to be this one, because I want angle side angle. So it has to be the one here 
on the wound there. Yeah? So A, B, E dash. Uh, is equal to E dash, B dash, F dash. And it is the same reason. They are also alternate. Uh, again, I'll throw the triangle in, or the Z in and then just take it back out. So here, across and down. Yeah? Right. So. The triangle A, B, E dash. A, B, E dash is congruent to B dash, F dash, E dash. And they are congruent angle, side, angle. Yeah? Okay. So if they are congruent, it means all their angles and all their sides are equal. And the one we care about is that... Um, these two are equal. Yeah? So A E dash equals E dash F dash. A E dash equals E dash F dash. The reason they're equal is their corresponding sides corresponding sides in a congruent triangle so that one is equal to that one and now we can work over here to the one where we actually care about the one we're trying to prove so DE equals AE dash because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram see the parallelogram there so the length of DE is equal to the length of AE dash yeah so DE is AE dash and EF is E dash F dash because that's also a big parallelogram there. So E F is E dash F dash. So if this is equal to this. They're all just going to go red together or green together. Sorry. So what I'm saying is, if this one, yeah, is equal to this one, and these are obviously equal to these, we can conclude that DE must be equal to EF QED. Yeah. Um, how many marks is that worth? I don't know, is it broken up? Oh yeah, okay. So the way it's marked here is, it is five marks for the diagram and the given
uh, five marks for the to prove and the construction. Ten marks then for the proof. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do this one and uh, right. So the diagram shows triangle A B C where A B is 150. D E F G and A B are parallel and the length of C E E G and G B are equal, which it says the area of D F Oh, that's that bit there in the middle. So the area of this bit is 2100 zero, zero square units, the bit in the middle. Find the area of triangle A, A, B, C. So A, B, C is the big one. Okay, so if these parallel lines cut equal intervals of that transversal on the right, then they also cut equal intervals of this transversal on the left. If they're parallel, then we have these yokes. Yeah, there's an F up there, like corresponding. So, oh. This angle equals this angle equals this angle. And likewise, this angle equals this angle equals this angle. Okay, now, <laughs> I've said a lot there, I haven't written any of it, so let's write that. So, if D E, F, G, and A, B cut equal intervals of B, C, then they will cut equal intervals of a c yeah i also said that i'll do it in red to match angle c a b equals angle c f g equals angle c d e because they're corresponding. And then we also have angle C, E, no, start with the big one, sorry. Uh, C, B, A equals C, G, F equals C, E, D, and they're also corresponding. Right? Key. So I can take the triangles apart. I think I'm going to need to do that. So we have the little one C, D, E, and this angle and this angle. Okay. And then the slightly bigger one. Come on. Whatever. Uh, C, F, G, and this angle, and this angle, and then the slightly bigger one again. It's 
that is C, A, B, and this one, and this one. Oh, and this one is the same in each triangle because it's literally the same angle. Yes, so I can say that as well. So I can say that angle D, no, A, C, B equals angle F, C, G equals angle D, C, E because they're all the same angle. Yeah, so I just named it in each triangle, but they are all the same angle. So therefore, uh, the triangles are similar. Right, so if this is 150, this one, uh, sorry, this one is one third of ABC. So this one is going to be 50, and this one is two thirds. Of ABC so this one's going to be a hundred so the little one is one third so that's 50 and then the middle one is two thirds um we must have to do something with the two so if you do um this triangle And now then go away again. Right. If you do this triangle here, right, look where the shaded bit is. So this triangle, take away the little triangle, leaves you with the shaded bit. So if we can do the area of this triangle and minus the area of this triangle, we get 2100. I seem to have loads of variables, but let's see what happens. So if we do the area of CFG and minus the area of CDE, the answer is 2100. Okay, um, it probably doesn't matter which way we do, like, I'm assuming we're going to use. Half the base by the heights, maybe not. So if we call that H, then this one would have to be 2H, and then this one would have to be 3H, yeah? Double and triple, okay. So, Half the base by the perpendicular height is half of 100 times 2h, that's that one. So half of 100 times 2h minus the area of the little one is half of 50 times h. That equals 2100. Oh. Sorry, it's finished on my screen and there is actually only one variable, so I should be able to get H here. And if I have H, I can, okay, there we go. So half of 100 is 50, but then you're doubling it again, so we're back to 100, sorry. 
So that first bit's 100 H. Second one is minus 25 H and that equals 2100. That is 75 H equals 2100. And then if we divide by 75 on both sides, and we get 28. Right, so H is 28. This question is find the area of ABC, so it's this one, so it's 3 times 28. So it is 84. So if we do half the base So half the base multiplied by the height is half of 150 multiplied by 84. It's 6,300 units squared. The area of the shape. What's next? Ah, we'll start. We'll keep going to the bell goes. Oh, sorry, marks for that. Um, ten. So that should be thirty marks for this question. Question two. I got that right? Yes, 30 marks. Okay, so we have the first two done there. <laughs> it's going to be many videos. Uh, right, we'll start question three. So, where is it? Here. So the match day squad of an Irish rugby team is selected from the following provinces. 12 from Lent. So 12 players from Leinster, 5 players from Munster, 3 players from Ulster, and 3 players from Connacht. In how many ways can a team of 15 players be chosen if all members of the matchday squad are available for selection? Okay, so how many players is that? 12 and 5 and 6 is 23 players. So 23 choose 15. Yeah, it's chosen, so it's choose notation. So 20 choose 15. There are 490,314 combinations. Uh, I just checked the scheme there, and that's right, and it's worth five marks. Um, the starting team consists of 11 players from Leinster. Um, okay, so 11 players from Leinster, and there were 12 Leinster players. Two players from Connacht, and there were three. Uh, one player each from Munster and Ulster. So for Munster, there are five, and one is playing. And for Ulster, there are three, and one is playing. Okay, in how many ways can the team be chosen if all the members of the squad are available for selection? So, uh, 12 Leinster players, choose 11. And three Connacht players, choose two. And five Munster players, choose one. And three Ulster players, choose one.
So 12 by 3 by 5 by 3 is 540. So in how many ways can the team be selected? 540 ways. Hence, find the probability that the team is chosen in this way. Uh, so probability makes it a fraction. So you put 540 over the 49314 from the previous part. So that is 90 over 81719. That is correct, and it's worth 10 marks. Okay. Find the probability that at least two players from Connacht are chosen. At least two. How many are there? Connacht have three players. So. So Connacht have three players, so at least two. At least two means two Connacht players or three. Sorry. Two Connacht players or three Connacht players. Okay, so if we do two Connacht players, um, we're talking about the three available and we want two of them. Right. Um, now the rest of the team, so there was 23 players in total. So if you take out the Connacht players, we're down to 20 and we need 15. So it's going to be from the other 20 players, we are going to need 13. Yeah? 3 choose 2 times 20 choose 13 is 2, 3, 2, 5, 6, 0. Oh. And then it's going to be 3 players will be all three Connacht players are chosen, and then from the other 20, we're choosing 12. So 3 choose 3 multiplied by 20 choose 12 is 1, 2, 5, 9, 7, 0. Oh. Okay, so they're probabilities. So it's going to be 2, 3, 2, 5, 6, 0, oh, which is the first one, over 4, 9, 0, oh, 3, 1, 4 over 490314 or 125970 over 490314 and we add them together and we get 185 over 253 and yep that is correct and that's five marks right so I'll leave it there and I will pick up after this class